Hi there, these comments are for Jay and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer from OTC, OnlineTOEFLCourse.com, and you're doing some uh, speaking practice, am I right? So I have the rubrics right here. I got your speaking task, and I think this one is, upon your death, what valuable object or material possession would you give to a friend, and then why? and give specific examples and reasons to support your opinion. That's kind of what you're answering here. So I'm gonna go ahead and listen to it once, and then I'll give you my first impressions. We'll listen to it again, and I'll give you more feedback on your speech. Have to choose some uh, valuable object to inherit. I choose my house in the countryside to uh, for my daughters because it is comfortable and uh, she can practice uh, interesting activities. First of all, although the house is in the countryside, it has uh, some uh, ba basic facilities, for example, internet, fresh water, electricity, and so on. Uh, therefore, she can enjoy the house in, the, in her holidays. Second, uh, she can practice uh, uh, some interesting activities, for one example... Th one thing, when you say she can enjoy the house during the holidays, how about she can comfortably enjoy the house during the holidays? And by using comfortably the adverb, you can tie it back to the purpose of your time. Riding a bike in the trails uh, or cultivate uh, a plant uh, such as um, banana, yucca, and so on. Uh, for, t for two reasons, I like maybe for these two reasons, like to inherit this uh, house for my daughter. You, I would like my daughter to inherit my house, or th the object I'd like my daughter to inherit is my house. So you're still, you're still in the two range right now, and that's okay. It takes a while to get out of there. You got to solve a few problems here. So I think notably your delivery, just a lot of delivery issues, almost to the extent that some words that you say, I cannot completely understand what they are, or I have to pay a lot of attention to understand. Remember here, I know I'm old, no doubt, but I got on these headphones, and I got a volume thing here, and I can turn it up. Now, if I can't hear you clearly with this, then nobody's going to hear you very clearly. So... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying my, my first impression right now is probably between 2 and 2.5. That's kind of where you are right now. Okay, let's listen to it one more time. If I have to choose some uh, valuable object to... You want to say valuable, some valuable object. Correct. I choose my house. In if I have to choose, I would put I will choose. So if I have... I will, if I had to choose, I would. So I would put the, the modal auxiliary verb in there, will. And that would make that a little bit more grammatical. In the countryside to, uh, for my daughters because it is comfortable and uh, she can practice uh, interesting activities. Okay, good. The good thing is, is you actually have two support points in the introduction around which you can frame the body of your response so you have a good strategy I know where you're going with this thing and and you're, you're trying to connect everything together which is good first of all although the house is in the countryside it have a song it has not it have so remember in using it you want to use a singular verb uh, but basic facilities for example internet fresh water, electricity, and so on. Yeah, I like how you're giving specific examples of different types of, I would say they're utilities, not facilities. Facilities are kind of more like building structures. Utilities are kind of what you just named. And therefore, she can enjoy the house in, the, in her holidays. Okay. Second, uh, she can I would say second of all. I think that you said first of all, right? First of all, second of all. Practice a, a some interesting activities. For example, riding a bike in the 
trails uh, or cultivate uh, a plant uh, such as... You want to say cultivating. Don't forget to pronounce all of that word. So with these multisyllabic words, Jose, sometimes you don't completely pronounce all the syllables in those words. As um, banana, yoka, and so on. Uh, for, t for two reasons... I'd say for these two reasons. I like to inherit this uh, house for my daughter. I would like to, I would, I, if you say inherit, I would like for my daughter to inherit this house upon my death. Or finally, the house is the object that I'd like my daughter to inherit upon my death. Or the house is my valuable object that I'd like my daughter to inherit. So that's a language use issue there. Uh, so I think that my, my score is probably pretty accurate. I'm going to say you're probably between 15 and 17 points out of 30. So the good thing is, is you have a good understanding in your, in your topic development of how to organize and develop your response. So I'm going to give you some big, some big kudos. I, I think you're going in the right direction there. Uh, unfortunately, you did have some language use problems, and there's some limitations going on in there with your grammar and vocabulary, and then you have a lot of delivery issues. I'll just give you three right now, three things. I don't want to overwhelm you too much, but I'd like you to work on sentence rhythm in the pronunciation area of my course. I think that's going to be helpful. Uh, number two, uh, I, I want you to f work on intonation. I think there's five different video lessons that I teach regarding intonation. And finally, uh, check out the lessons on thought groups and blending. You're getting better in that area, but still your thought groups are a little too small. So you have too many pauses and hesitations after say two words or three words at the most but you want to get your thought groups up to about four to five stress words and that's going to help your pacing and you actually speak more naturally if you can do that now it's easy for me to say all this but not easy to learn so now your job is to go into the pronunciation section of my online course and get to work sentence rhythm tone thought groups and blending all right buddy and keep it up remember it's a slow progress. It's a, it's a slow kind of a process to get to where you want to be. But you're doing what you need to do. You're submitting your speaking and your writing practice. You're studying really hard. And just make sure you surround yourself with as much English as you can. And that will really make a big difference when it comes to your overall academic English language proficiency. And of course, that's going to make a big difference in your TOEFL score. All right, it's going to go up, 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 up. All right, thank you, sir.